in the event, in the event you need to break a $20 bill, you're in the wrong place. Just give up. Just go home. It's not worth the trouble. There's no, there's no $5 bills in there. I know what you're thinking. I can see them. They're not really there. It's an illusion. Jay, Rich, and Jerry, we're here with you. Trail Whispers podcast on a Thursday afternoon. Fun stories, chiropractic care. Life's an open book, so sit back in your chair. We're walking down the trail of life, so come along with Trail Whispers podcast. You can't go wrong. Hola. Tenth episode, baby. Cheers. We're celebrating. I got a fresco. What do you got? Black coffee in my specialty mug. Black coffee at 10 p.m. 10 p.m., baby. You're a true truck driver, Jerry. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Dude, those guys, those truckers. They can slug it back. Oh, yeah. You see them walk into the truck stop with their huge, like, 64-ounce container, (laughs) and they just are, like, looking through you to the coffee thing, and they're just filling it up black. And it's just, like, the worst quality coffee, and they're just, like, drinking it down. So, Dude, what do you think? We talked about heart rates last time. What do you think their heart rates are? I don't know. I mean, they're living a sedentary lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. And they drink they drink a lot of coffee. Dude, and those guys, it just is the life. Like, you eat a lot of junk food. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's what's, that's what's in those truck stops. You go in there, it's like pizza, hot dogs, chips, candy bars, that kind of stuff. Like... And that's fun for like a day, but you spend 30 years doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you so, obviously worked in the trucking industry for quite some time, dealing firsthand with truckers. Did you ever ten have years, any, ten years. any experience that you can recall on? You're like, oh, yeah, this is one of those memories. Do you ever get to get inside of a truck or go on a road oh, trip yeah. with anyone? Definitely, yeah. So, yeah, I was, you know, because I worked third shift there for a bit, too, so... I remember this couple, they came in, dude, they had a sweet truck. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this truck. I think you want to give them a was, shout out? You think they're listeners? I don't know. I can't remember their names, but they spent like three hundred and fifty or $400,000 on this truck. It's like a huge RV. It's an extended, um, extended uh, cab, I guess they'd call it. This is a tractor trailer viewer, so they're pulling a, a 53-foot long trailer and these guys pulled a refrigerated trailer so it paid better um so they're probably bringing in a couple hundred grand a year doing that but they're definitely bringing at least 200 a year but uh this truck was sweet you know it's an rv i mean it's got beds shower table tv all this is is a sweet setup but uh they had a deep freezer in there and he reaches in and he pulls out like five butterfinger bars and hands them to me (laughs) <laughs> I was like, his name was John. And I was like, oh, thanks, John. He's like, yeah, we were going, we were out in uh, New Mexico somewhere and uh, went to this discount outlet store. They had these candy bars for 10 cents a piece. And I was like, are they any good? And he's like, oh, yeah, they're good. Try one. And so, you know, I waited for it to thaw out. They were, they were just fine. So, did you eat yeah. all five? Over time. And I, well, oh, okay. I gave, so I gave one to like someone else in there that was working or whatever, but yeah. And like, he would call in and he'd reference himself by like, Hey, it's John. You remember I gave you the Butterfinger set one night? And I was like, Hey John, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Cause I was the supervisor. So they, like, if there was an issue or they wanted something, they'd call in and talk to the supervisor. So yeah. Butterfinger I mean, John. Yeah, they'd be like, this truck wants to talk to you. And I'm like, I haven't talked to them. But I'm like, oh, that's that's John. What's John? What's John up to? So, yeah, dude, it was, yeah, this, they're impressive. The trucks are impressive. But that lifestyle, like I said, 
it's fun for a meal or it's fun for a day or whatever, but like nonstop eating trash. Yeah. No. I'm trying to get my uh, eating together. So I've been doing the intermittent fasting, still going on that. So, um, what last week was like six days strong. So I guess I'm almost two weeks strong on this now of just eating one meal. Dude, that's awesome. So, but yeah, the the issue I have is like within that one meal, I want to like, I want something salty. I want something sweet. I want to be full, like all of this. So I'm giving myself like a three to four hour eating window. So like today I ate at four and the last meal or the last thing I ate was at 730. So. Okay. And then yeah. you'll wait till tomorrow at four and eat again? Yep. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow at four. So you so. pounded down five butterfingers? <laughs> no, today I had um I had a bagel with cream cheese and bacon on it at four o'clock. That's what I had. And then uh at let's see. And then I had some sausage links at like five o'clock and I had a candy bar. I did. Sorry, Jerry. And then, uh, good. and then I had some cantaloupe. Got to get the cantaloupe in. The doctor called. He's like, get the cantaloupe in today. I was like, not yet. It's going down doc. So whole cantaloupe. No, no half a loaf today. Okay. Yeah. Half a loaf. Yeah. I mean, within a three hour window or whatever, I don't want to slam the whole thing so yeah but that's probably like i probably had like 2500 calories i bet you or 2000 at least calories within like a three hour period so, so. i'm curious because you obviously have diabetes sure what is your uh what's your little tracker thing telling you throughout the course of the day are you seeing better results yeah during the day it's great during the day, it's great. So what's been happening, though, is if I eat junk food, see, and that's what they tell you. They tell you at the doctor's office, like, oh, you can eat whatever you want. Just give yourself medicine. And it's not true. I didn't realize it when I was a kid. So I just did what they said. And it's not true. And so mm -hmm. if you eat junk food, it spikes your sugar now. And then as your body is breaking that down and digesting it here in like three or four hours, it'll spike it again. As I'm thinking about it, oh. let's see if I got enough medicine here. But uh, yeah, so yeah, during the day, things are great. But what happens is if I eat junk food, then it'll spike it. And then so it's be like it would be ideal if I had like if I did keto style eating mm -hmm. or like, you know, keto is technically ca classified under 40 carbohydrates. So if I just said mm -hmm. like, hey. This bagel has 35 carbs. This, these are the only carbs I'm going to eat today, you know, mm -hmm. and then don't have the fruit or don't have the candy bar. Just have that and then have high fat, high protein stuff. But the problem is, is I'm morbidly obese. So. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> it is. It is a problem. My BMI is 48. So, is it 48? No, I'm kidding. No, no. I have oh, no idea what it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I know like BMI, you can't trust all of it because you could be, you know, muscle bound and it's like, oh, you're overweight for your size. And it's like, well, you don't see the figure. You're assuming body fat, but 48 just sounds extreme. That kind of yeah. sounds like the pant sizes we were talking about. Where it's like, oh, you know, you go in the Goodwill and you're looking for pants. You're like, 54.28. Is that possible? I know, dude. Sometimes you see those hanging on the clearance rack and you're like, what in the world? <laughs> if Let's I see. ever get to that level, Justin, just take me out back and just yeah. give me an apple and say, Jerry, it's been a good ride. It's, it's, <laughs> I love knowing you, buddy, but it's just, it's time. <laughs> We're going to take you out. It's like my dad used Peter's to say. Peter's waiting for you. My dad used to say, you know, before you put me in a home, just wheel me to the top of the stairs and I'll take care of the rest. 
<laughs> so it's like, man, he really didn't want to go in a home. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> what is your – I just calculated my BMI on this website. Oh, that's so good. So Really? Has, what? It, okay, what's – how do they calculate it first? So all it asks you is height and weight. That's all it asks you. First so of you all. don't. It doesn't even tell you like, oh, you're you're full of muscle. You have no, no idea. It, yeah, I mean, someone stopped me at work the other day and said, "Hey, Justin, you working out?" And I said, "No." And they said, hmm. "Oh, your back's looking really muscular." Ooh. So it was a man. So okay. Unfortunately, but. <laughs> can you do you know so uh yeah i don't trust this stuff necessarily so what's your bmi according to your height and weight is it 48 it's 30 30 what is considered healthy BMI? A, so 25 and under it looks like let's see what is. yours is you're six foot six foot you weigh a buck 75 in a while, but i'm always no no i'm like around 190 192 192 and you're obese, Jerry. So nice. I'll take 26 that. is your BMI. I'll, t I'll take the obesity <laughs> rating on that. Viewers out there, this whole thing's a scam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this BMI, this is garbage. I'm a picture of health. Okay. Because it stands for body mass index, correct? Yeah, it does. Bogus. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it stands for. Yeah, what, what, what you could make it stand for. But yeah, I don't necessarily trust it. I guess it's good, like, as a, like, probably for most people as a general rule. But yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I need to lose my stomach. I hold, I get weight in my face and in my stomach. I don't know. I know mm. everyone's different. But the stomach is caused, if you ever see someone with a big gut, and this is true, you can look this up. I just know this because I have diabetes. The stomach is caused from excess insulin. So someone says they have a beer gut. They actually, they have a carb gut is what they have. So yep. that's yep. what, that's what causes that. So, you know, and then I just, I hold it in my neck, in my face. That's the first thing that like swells up. I have pictures of me when I was like 275. So that's about 40 pounds ago. And you can hardly see my eyes. <laughs> just it's like man is there is there a person under there it's like yeah he's there so reference back to last week episode nine this is episode 10 by the way but um is that why you think that uh you have like an infatuation with a lot of the asian flavors what do you mean well when you couldn't see your eyes so typically oh. then it's probably like pretty squinty <laughs> Yeah, maybe. That was funny. I didn't realize that. Like, you know, my top two are Asian flavors. And then you were like, you're going to marry an Asian woman. It's like, hey, <laughs> as long as she can put some teriyaki on the wings. You're, yeah, you're good with that. She can't speak English, but she knows how to make some good teriyaki wings. <laughs> yeah, Asian people always sound angry, don't they? Like, I can just imagine, like, an Asian lady yelling. I don't know. At least you wouldn't know what she's saying. It That's could be true. a compliment or it could be like just she's obliterating you. Like cursing me out, calling on her mm. dead ancestors to <laughs> <laughs> cast a spell on me, whatever. So. so you should, next time you see someone that's a little bit heavy, you should be like, so I see you like the insulin. Is that what it is? <laughs> is insulin hanging around? Yeah, that's what I like. Extra it's fascinating insulin. with you, with your ex, with your your uh, day-long fast, because that's the one thing, too. I've been doing a little bit of research, a little bit more research on the fasting. And it's, yeah, you can actually lower. Now, I don't know if it's just 24-hour fast or if it's longer, but you can lower your insulin resistance, which is what you want to do. Sure. So right now, you're probably a very high insulin resistant. Yeah, um, that's just reality. I guess. And usually type one diabetics are because the insulin that you're giving yourself is not the same as human insulin. It's actually comes from pigs. So my dad used to joke that that's why I was so messy is because I'm part pig. So 
Yeah. So you're, <laughs> you're a little more resistant. Yeah. There's a fast, there's a book and I've mentioned it before, but I, I have it on audible. I've listened to it before. Um, but it's specifically about fasting, treating type two diabetes, lowering insulin resistance, and all this is a doctor in, in Toronto and he treats diabetics specifically with fasting. So, so it was interesting. So, so I, he, he could get you off of insulin a hundred percent. Not me, not me type two okay. diabetic. So if, the, okay. if your pancreas works, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. Let me find the name of it real quick. Fasting book type two. Pretty sure this dude was Asian that wrote it. All the best doctors are. Yeah. Um, the Diabetes Code, Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G, Fung. But, yeah, it's... That's a fun name. Yeah, but listen to it, man. It was good. Mm. Um, prevent so, and reverse. So give me, give me a description of someone that's on the edge of type 2 diabetes. Sure. You're waking up to go to the bathroom a lot at night, but you're not you're not drinking water right before bed. You're obese. Go online. Body mass index, okay? You're among friends. Um, no, but you're obese you've, and you're holding weight in your stomach. Um, you have black marks, not black necessarily, but like dark brown marks on your neck. And in the creases on like your arms, you've seen people like that before. Oh, I've seen people like that. Before. They have diabetes. They just haven't diagnosed it yet. So no that's way. what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. I've always wondered with the skin discoloration, what was going on They're They, they're making a ton of insulin is what they're doing. So, wow. um, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah. What, do, what are, are you going to say signs. for like a like a, a man? Are they doing that 56, 28 inch set of pants or? I don't know. I mean, I got a gut and I have a, I can slide myself into a pair of 34 waists. So I think everyone carries weight differently. And yeah, you've seen some people be able to lift that stomach up like a curtain and just hang it down over the pants. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you probably don't want to no, see what's behind the curtain either. Don't look. Don't look. Don't kids. look. You can have a remote control or a can of Fresca. Yeah, but those are some telltale signs. So, listeners, if you want to know more, you might be saying, Do I have diabetes? Leave a comment for us. So, we did have one comment last week. I don't know if you oh, saw so that. So, we got to fork out some money. No, I did not. Yeah. Yep, we did get a comment. Let's uh okay. actually let me read that real quick. Let me find find the comment and then we got to figure out how we can Venmo this uh this cat some money. Yeah, I think it um I think it'll be easier to Venmo him than you think. Is it you? No, the comment is from Oh. Well, we got two comments. Okay, let's see. Really? Yep, we got one called at my glasses guy. And it says Asian zing question marks. Sounds like Justin's next girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Jerry here. I agree with Jerry here. Mango habanero all the way. Can't wait to get my $2 hands up emoji. <laughs> so, this is our friend that did the wheeze and he owns the shady eyeglasses stop and all the dollar general pop-up locations um wash jill cox that's him so we really will be sending him a check for 2502 uh because it's 2500 bucks for us oh we yeah, have to yeah, write yeah. To him. we have to pay him to do ad reads for him i forgot about that yeah messed up deal yeah we also got a comment from at Jessica Brislin 12 and said, I'll leave a comment for $2. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, that's hey. a blast from the past. That's uh, Juice's sister. Yep, Juice's sister. Shout you're, out to Jessica. You're... Thanks for leaving a comment. Yeah. Just, hey, she Jessica, needs to, how you doing? Uh, she needs to set us up with uh, a Venmo or something so we can send her some money. 
I'll send yeah. it to you. I can send you a dollar, and then she can you can send it over. Why don't you take care of uh, Josh, and I'll take care of Jessica here. And okay, uh, fair yeah. enough. So I'll just. I feel like Josh might just owe me money, though. I'm sure he does. But we'll stay yeah. true to the promise on this. Yeah, I'm sure he does. So I'll. Uh, yeah, I will. I don't know how to get in contact with someone, so. I'll leave a comment on your comment, Jessica, if you're listening, and then um, I'll just put the email in there, and so you just send me your Venmo name. I don't have Cash App. I'm very just, I only have one thing, okay? So, you're a dinosaur. Yeah, I do have Apple Pay. Um, okay, there we go. But I don't have any money in my Apple Pay. I don't know. I think I need to figure out how this stuff works. Let's be real. It's 2024. I need to figure out how this works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. I got to be better. Um, also got a comment that we had better audio quality since I use these Apple headphones. So turns out I was just using some generic headphones and uh, nice. that was the Who source of the comment? problem. Um, myself. Okay. okay. To myself. Cool. So you can just Apple pay yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just pay myself. And I don't think anyone <laughs> left one on Spotify, but let me just double check. Um. I can't believe we got two comments. I mean, what a, to them. Dude. I thought for sure when my wife listened to it that she would have commented to score two bucks. But yeah, she's dude. she's already flush. Let's, and yeah, that, let's be that's real. That's the cool thing about it too is like we don't know who listens to this. We have no idea. We just send this out there. So we've got a couple between YouTube and Spotify. You know, a couple dozen people listening, and so it's like, hey. More people actually listen on Spotify than on YouTube. Um, mm. So if you're listening on Spotify, don't you want to see our faces? Is it is it because my BMI is thirty? Is, <laughs> is that why and mine's twenty six? Is that why? So we we're just bat, we both have shape. high BMIs? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I don't Dude, know. It's interesting. You, okay, so imagine we were talking about this earlier. So my wife was saying that she. She was more in line with my soft flavors. In fact, she was craving wings after listening to the episode today. And um, I don't think I made an announcement on here yet, but she is expecting baby number four coming. So awesome. So, which is awesome. And what, she's like, what's so his you know name going to be? Is. Draymond? Um, Hunter Octavius? Joseph Justin Biden Martin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. So she's no. craving wings. She's pregnant so, craving wings. Yeah. So she heard that and she's like, I, I'm just in the mood for wings. So she got a sweet barbecue and garlic parm. Nice. Classic but flavors. I will say this. So there's a, a funny story back when she was like, a, I think like a tiny little kid, two or three or something like that. I don't know. And she eats the bone in wings similar to you. That's what I'm talking about. So. It'd be interesting to have the two of you doing like just a 10 minute segment, eating the wings and just discussing whatever. Yeah. And see how many people could actually sit in through that whole segment of you guys deboning wings. Yeah. And let's see how many we can eat. Mariah, I'm down. So you, uh, let's set this up. We'll have Jerry go pick us some up. I'll come over and we'll, <laughs> s we'll just see how many we can get down in 10 minutes, like a Joey Chestnut style. <laughs> that guy's amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I went out to wings on this past Thursday night with a good friend in town here. Um, and I was eating the wings like that. And I just said to myself, I was like, man, this is disgusting. Cause I, I was like having a conversation. I like put the wing in, like twist around, pull out my mouth full of chicken. I'm like, I got to calm down. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. See, when we were growing up as kids, my parents, and I, I look back and I'm glad for it. I don't always practice it, but they always said, pace yourself with the table. So eat at the speed of everybody so you don't just, you know, just hog it down and you're done. You're sitting there. And then also be aware of how you're eating food. Sure. So little things yeah, they, like that. Yeah, they had a, us do a thing when at FedEx and like the management training thing or whatever. They basically told you like they had a little course about how to eat when you're with people because you were going to go out mm. to if you were out to dinner with a client or something like that. 
So it's like, yeah. What were some of the things that they taught you? Basically, like, don't be disgusting, you know, like. Don't put a whole thing like, in your mouth and just swirl like what you're it. Saying. And I don't remember everything, but like, that was my takeaway. I was like, oh, well, yeah. yeah. Kind of got to have it together. And like, I'm not a disgusting person. I don't want anyone to think that, but it's just like chicken wings. Chicken wings is a, is a, is a bad food to eat when you're with somebody. Cause you're like, it's gross. I mean, you're sticking things in your mouth. You're licking your fingers. Sauce is going everywhere. You're dipping stuff in ranch and there's just a lot going on. So I think here you are you, trying to close out a deal. You've got the discolored neck, the squinty eyes and your deboning wings. Yeah. So, some dude gets some sauce in his neck. No, he's just got diabetes. He's dying right in front of us. We better give him the deal. Let's close the deal. Oh man, yeah. No, you just wouldn't order wings if you were at a business lunch. You wouldn't get wings. So I've gotten sushi before at like a business lunch, but you can eat that with the. Uh, you know, the chopsticks or the fork or something. Dude, I love sushi. Sushi's good. Okay, so give me your most memorable time of eating with someone, whether it was business or just in a group gathering. Hmm. Well, I mean, most memorable. We've talked about some of the most memorable times of eating, like the stupid things that I've done. Let's go maybe like more discuss like someone that you're sitting around and you're like, I I can't believe that they're eating like this. Hmm. Or was it just you the other night? I think it was probably <laughs> me. I'm putting myself <laughs> like I remember one time I didn't realize, you know, they give you that ball of uh what is that stuff on the sushi plate? It's wasabi. Oh. Wasabi, dude, that stuff is so good. Yeah, so I didn't realize what that was, and someone's like, you should eat that. And so I ate the whole ball in one bite, and my mouth was on fire, my nose was running. I was, like, getting sick because I ate all of it at once. Um, yeah, that was memorable. But I don't know. Chicken wings. Anytime you eat chicken wings with someone, it's always kind of gross, but yeah. I can remember being, I don't remember who the person was, thankfully, but it was definitely one of those people I think that you described that was, that was diabetic and just undiagnosed, had the really large neck Hmm. and have you ever heard like real, real big people when they almost have trouble breathing Sure, and you can hear some sort of like, uh, I don't know if it's like a, a hiccup of like their heart stopping, but it's almost like the final gulp with each bite. But you hear this like really bizarre noise. <laughs> sure. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's hard to I'm describe, to describe it. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. You're just yeah. watching. You're like, is that the food or is that, are they going to die? Yeah. That's, it's like, man, this guy sounds disgusting when he eats. Like, I don't sound disgusting. I've eaten with some people like that before <laughs> where it's like they're trying to get breaths in in between bites and it's just, <laughs> dude, they're struggling. I've been there. Yeah, I got a buddy. He's a friend. He's a he's a dear friend, but it's disgusting to watch him eat. Now that I think about it, I'm picturing a guy eating pizza and it's just, man, it's gross. But Or yeah. like to- yeah. always talks with his mouth full and stuff. Like there's some people like that. So. Yeah, I had a friend growing up that did that, and my mom and dad were like, "Don't eat like your friend." And I was like, "Okay, yeah." So, oh, we'll I'm not talking with my mouth full. No, none of that. You know, and if I do, like, if I am, if I feel like I have to say something, I like cover my mouth when I'm talking. You know what I mean? Or I'm like, mm-hmm, "Yep, yep," and I'll like, cover my mouth. So, yeah, trying to catch your breath. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I'm going back in for another slice. <gasps> it's almost like you can visually on the outside see the body begin to like struggle for like the oxygen, the heart's like seizing up, the yeah. blood sugar spiking. Yeah. This guy's dying. It's fascinating. Yeah. Dude, uh, how was your week this past week? Dude, such a great week. We had a great week. 
we were, it was a busy week, uh, in a good way. We had, uh, a missions conference down here. So I took the kids to that every night. They had a great time. And, um, yeah, it's just a really good time. Some you late went to church. You went to church every night? Not every night. It's a little bit extreme, Monday. don't you think? A little bit extreme. It was a little extreme. <laughs> Took a break. <laughs> um, no, it's Wednesday. What was it? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, three nights. Nice. And it was good. We just had a good time. So that's awesome. Some late nights, but kids had a blast. We were in the bad thing is I always forgot we had an hour drive back home. So we're hanging out and the kids are just, you know, playing with their friends and we're talking and I'm like, crap, it's 1030. I got to get back home. So I'm like, by the time oh I get them goodness. loaded up, we're getting back home like 1130 to 12. So it was a long week, but it was a good, a good week. So. Dude, that's crazy. So you're an hour from the church that you're going to right now down there in Florida? It's it's like 52 minutes, so it's an hour. And in this area where we're at, too, you like the one night we left, we were going to be there 15 minutes early, and we got there 10 minutes late. It added 25 minutes because of traffic. Oh, my goodness. So. That's the worst. Yeah, it's rough. But just great time with the kids. They're. They're at such a fun age and an inquisitive age and lots of questions and yeah. they're excited about learning the Bible and learning songs and, you know, learning about the different missionaries and they got a sweet lady that was teaching their class that was really um, just awesome. Like she just does little sweet things for the kids every night. So that was really cool. They just, they look forward to that. And, yeah, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, but listen, listeners, uh, two two things I want to share with you. First of all, you know, this cat's driving. He's driving an hour to get to church. So get to church. It's important. Okay, if you live far away, you're like, there's no good church nearby. Surely, surely, within an hour, there's something out there. So find something. Um, second of all, life hack is I drive if I'm going on the highway somewhere. Not to like Walmart or whatever, but, you know, I drive to Columbus all the time and I always use Google Maps, even though I know the way there's no confusion on the way. But what it does is it'll say faster route available. There's an accident ahead or it'll say speed trap ahead. How many times has that saved my life? Tons. So that's just what I yeah. do. It's not for everybody, but dude, I was using Google Maps, and it was crazy because there's one route that sometimes would save you time, and the traffic down here is so. We're Fort Myers right now. It's so insane that sometimes that alternate route was equally as long because it's like so many people diverted that way. Okay, and yeah. the one way is getting you to the highway, and the other way is taking you through about thirty lights. On like mm. a, it'd be like a back, like a back highway. So there's a yeah. lot of like business. Yeah, like a state route or something, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're right. Go, that, those are good. Those are good hacks. Don't ever use Apple Maps. It's Apple, terrible. I was just gonna say that, man. I love Apple. I love iPhones, iPads. Like I've, I'm looking at mm -hmm. an iPad right now. I'm talking to you on an iPhone. I'm using Apple headphones. Like I love Apple products. If I could afford it, I'd buy a MacBook. Um, thankfully more people didn't comment just saying <laughs> only on two bucks, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Apple maps and Apple CarPlay. Do you have Apple CarPlay? No, I got Spotify. Well, yeah, I have Spotify too, but at, what Apple CarPlay does is it mirrors your phone on the computer in your car on like the screen. Okay. It's the worst. We have them in the work cars in those brand new Kias and it's terrible. Like it's always disconnecting. So like my map's up there and then my map's not up there. I'm listening to podcasts. All of a sudden it cuts out like it's the worst. So Apple, Steve Jobs, if you're listening um, <laughs> from beyond the grave, if you can fix the Apple CarPlay and then Apple Maps is trash. Just make it just like Google Maps. That's all we want is it's OK. It. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be different all the time. If someone else is doing it real good, you know, you don't don't reinvent just the wheel. Out. Just, just buy yeah. them out. Just buy copy what they're doing i'm sure it's not illegal okay man <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to interrupt so but that's all a right, good so rip. 
Yeah, good you had week, your though. you had Mish's conference. Good week overall. Yep, dude is awesome. Yeah, dude, every so, day. I'll say this: it's a li- the little things in life matter. We wake up and every day the sun's shining. It's been like eighty degrees every day. Mm. Yeah, we had snow on the ground this morning here. Not jealous. No, <laughs> not one <laughs> bit. So my sister asked me, and she's a faithful listener, and. Uh, we appreciate her, and yeah, but she was like, is Jeremy's wife really going to be a, a lifeguard for the YMCA? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I figured, I figured you're joking because of the way you talk about it. And I was like, yeah, we're absolutely joking. So do you want to oh, actually share, do you want to actually share like why you're down there and what she's doing? Uh, okay. For your sister, we'll cut her a little bit of slack. Because, yeah, we don't want her to, you know, to feel less than. But my wife was like, what if someone thinks I'm actually going to be a YMCA instructor? And I'm like, no one's all the believe listen- that. Every- all of them do. There's there's a few dozen people out here that think that she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I told her, I said, there's not a chance. I said, anybody would know the way we're talking about it. Six weeks of training down in Florida, you're not going to be a YMCA swim coach or lifeguard or whatever we said. So Rebecca, we'll cut you some slack. We'll just assume it's you're busy with yeah, life and Hey, your she's brain's pregnant a too. Foggy. She's having she's having twins. Yeah. That's so. what she could blame it on. And it'd be an easy pass. So she's actually um it's crazy. This is her last week. Mm. But she will be certified to teach ISR, which is infant safety rescue. So you, she'll be able to teach from six months to six years of age, survival swimming. So if you are in the market for someone, we will be, um, she'll be starting lessons. Lord willing, the plan is in May for her to start. And it'd be a small class. So probably about 12 kids or so. And then she'll eventually work up to maybe a little bit more, but, 12 to 15 kids, and it's a six-week uh, session, and 10, day, 10 minutes a day is what it is, five days a week. So it's a 10 big minutes? Time, 10 minutes a day. And what it is, though, is because you can't exhaust these kids by, oh, you know, because okay. you're teaching them. It's incredible. You'll see this 10-month-old that, you know, screaming and crying first couple weeks, whatever, week, two weeks, three weeks. And then all of a sudden they figured out and now they can float and then they can swim and they can roll back over to a float, know how to swim. So it's super valuable as a parent. If you have little kids, um, I would highly recommend it. We did it for our kids. And after that, that's when she, yeah, the doors opened up for her to do it. But um, so valuable because, yeah, you know, as a parent, you'll do anything for your kids and the small amount of money it co- it takes for this if if it helped your kid. In fact, we actually talked with a – my kids were interested in what does it, the back of an ambulance look like. And we talked with a um, two guys that were at an ambulance. We told them what we were down here for, and the guy said – he said, you know what? He said, we actually got a call like a couple weeks ago for a one-year-old that was floating. <clears throat> they called us, but thankfully this kid had gone through this training. And oh, wow. they found this baby on on its back floating in a in a pool. Hmm. So had that one year old not had that training, you know, it would have been a different story. But the baby is fine. They essentially just called the ambulance just to make sure, you know, everything was good. So that's what yeah. she's going for. So it's pretty that's awesome. awesome. When you said ten minutes a day, I was like, she's only doing training for ten minutes a day. This is a joke. But so she's training <laughs> each kid for 10 minutes a day. Each kid. That yeah. makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Okay. So in a two hour window, you're going to catch 12 kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. I've that, been seeing some of the videos for. she's put on Facebook, and I'm like, man, this, that's crazy. It is crazy. So, yeah, I've never went through it. I learned to swim in a Holiday Inn Express, viewers. <laughs> so my dad threw me in the water. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think I was like 11 years old. I was in Canada. We were we'd go up for Ni- we'd go up to see Niagara Falls. I remember doing this a couple of times as a kid, you know. And uh, I think it was Days Inn or was it Holiday Inn? It was one of those one of those you know budget type motel places. And uh, yeah, we're at the swimming pool, and he just grabs me and chucks me in the deep end. And my brother too. And so, yeah, it's kind of like I figured it out. <laughs> we're alive. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like <laughs> ISR. Yeah, that's the poor man's ISR. The Holiday Inn Express <laughs> swimming pool at a, as an 11 year old kid. So, yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's cool, though, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It's cool. I'm glad. Glad you guys are able to do it. And what a great time of year to be down there, too, in Florida. Oh. So. Dude, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Yeah. But That's yeah, good. tell me about your. That was my week in a nutshell. Tell me about your week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, great week last week. Um, it's busy at work. Real busy right now. So, um, you know, I work for a deck company. Viewers, so it's it's all hands on deck, literally and figuratively, right now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's busy, 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 but. I had really good time um, with a friend I went out to dinner with on Thursday. He's a missionary, so that was really good. Just spending some time with him. Um, and then on you know church Wednesday, just normal stuff throughout the week. Went to my sister's for dinner Tuesday, so that's always a good time. Um, yeah, so I just kind of structure my week that way where I always kind of have something going on. So, And then... Picked up the kids Friday. Exciting, exciting thing. My son Jonah was like, Dad, I'm on level 383 of Cat Escape. And I was like, <laughs> I said, Jonah, I've never been prouder of you in my life, bud. <laughs> and so you, you have this little cat character and you're trying to help it escape the house or something. And there's people running after you, chasing you. And I was like, son, I'll tell you what, if you if you get past level 400, you can pick wherever you want to go for breakfast tomorrow. And so he shows me my he shows me his his tablet and it says 401 and he beat he beat level 400. And I said yeah. I said Jonah because of you over 400 digital cats have found freedom. And <laughs> you can't put a price on that. Where do you want to go for breakfast? And so he's like I want to go to IHOP. So we go to IHOP on Saturday morning. It was a good time, but dude, I feel like the prices are crazy. And I like compared to Bob Evans. So Bob Evans has a kid meal, five bucks for breakfast, and it comes with a chocolate Not milk. Not bad. So at IHOP, it was like six fifty, and then you had to pay two fifty for your for your drink for your chocolate milk. And so I'm okay, like, okay, so what are you getting for that meal? Same thing you're getting at Bob Evans: pancakes. <laughs> sausage okay. eggs like that kind of thing so but i'm like dude that's almost twice as much so i spent 30 bucks i didn't even get breakfast because i'm fasting i just got coffee and so i spent 30 bucks for for three kids to eat at ihop maybe i'm like super cheap but then by the time you tip you're at like 36 37 dollars and it's like for some pancakes it's crazy so but, you tipped oh yeah of course okay yeah. I was talking sure. about Remember this we last talked? week. I know. You weren't I'm sure not, about different yeah, things. And... I'm not tipping at coffee shops or a pizza shop where I picked up my own pizza. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Don't make me feel people always try to make me feel like I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm normal. Okay. So So you okay, so you did tip. Good. I just yeah, want to make yeah. sure so that you weren't was, being generous. It, yeah. It was a good time. <laughs> I like uh I like going out to breakfast. It's fun. Every Saturday we have, I think it's good to have traditions with your kids, even if it might seem silly, but every Saturday we go out for donuts is our tradition. We always go to the same spot. I understand it's not the best quality donut in the world, but we go to Bueller's. Okay. People say they're trash. I think your wife at one point even posted online that Bueller's donuts are trash. So listen, Mariah, I understand that it's not the best quality donut in the world, but it's just like, hey, it's five minutes from my house. Every Saturday morning, we get up, we go to Bueller's, we get chalk, we get a peanut butter cream stick, or we get 
you know, Boston cream sticks or whatever they got going there, you know, and come back home, eat at the table and just have a good Saturday morning. Like, you know, I, uh, you hear people talk about like observing the Sabbath day. I don't necessarily do that, but like my goal is to have Saturday just be like, we're just chilling. There's nothing really going on. Like if we get invited somewhere, we're going to go if we, you know, whatever. So, but the, cool. like most Saturdays is just hanging out at the house. So that's what we did. We just, we hung out. Um, my daughter wanted to smash rocks with a hammer and look for quote unquote sick crystals inside, which is just little sparkles inside of a rock when you break it in half. So, and then made a bow and arrow for, well, he already had a bow, but I made him some arrows. I showed him how you can take a sharp piece of rock and, took some electrical tape, split a stick open, you know, got a straight stick, made arrows for him and showed him how to put nice. like a fletching, a fletching on the arrow. And so he's shooting, Jonah's shooting that in the yard and having fun with it. So yeah, just good times outside. Um, we did a lot of how to draw videos. So for you parents out there, there's this, there's this guy on YouTube. It's called art for kids hub. Have you seen this guy? Jeremy, uh -huh. I haven't seen him yet. No. So great videos. So just check it out on YouTube. Okay. And it, it just like, you know, there's a piece of paper and he's like, all right, art friends, we're going to today, we're going to draw an ice cream cone or what. And it's like him and his kid there and they're both drawing it. So, um, but the problem is, is this guy draws such good stuff, right? Like his lines are always perfect. It looks so good. All of his pictures look so good that my daughter who is six will get frustrated because hers doesn't look as good as his. And then she'll crumple the paper. And of course she's drawing with a Sharpie marker because that's what he's drawing with. And we can't draw with a pencil and be able to erase it. So yeah, we did a lot of how to draws. We wrote books. We had, yeah, it was a really good week, really good time, really good time at church yesterday. So Dude, that's awesome. I, what a fun time. Yeah, I guess two things, and these aren't necessarily segments, but just things I wanted to discuss. First of all, my kids always ask me if I've ever seen a car accident. And I'm like, um, you know, I've been in car accidents. I've never, like, witnessed a car accident happen. I witnessed a car accident happen, excuse me, last night. No so, way. Yeah, I'm driving on Perry. I'm driving down the road. <laughs> okay. Um, and you know that, you know, Perry and then Brunnerdale like curves into Perry. Yep. And there's someone turning out of Brunnerdale. They were on their phone texting and they ran off the road and smacked into a sign and completely crumpled the whole front end of their Honda Civic. And I was just like, oh man, that's unfortunate. So I witnessed you my first accident. stop the car and say, don't text and drive? They were fine. There was no one injured. Okay. I was just, yeah, they rolled into a sign at like 20 miles an hour. But the way those new cars are made, they just crumple up, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But I guess second thing, too, was I was on the way to pick up bacon. That's, that's where <laughs> I was going. And this is a topic I thought of this today when I was in my office. I was like... I should bring that up on the pod because people will probably think that's funny. Um, I have a friend who works at a meat packing plant. So he's able to get me bacon for $1 a pound, viewers. Matthew Foley? <laughs> yeah, Matt Foley. His name is Matt. I won't give you any other information. <laughs> Matt, if you're listening, you're a dear friend, and I appreciate you, brother. So... Um, I don't think he those listens. are kind of like reparations, though, for him for you know unfortunate damages from the past. Throwing up in my guest room. I think I've told that story yeah. on here before. Um, yeah. So I would. He if you haven't, me. he doesn't know me. Viewers, let us know, and he'll tell the story. Yeah. If I if I've never told the story about a about a grown man. Um, yeah, uh, throwing up 12 pulled pork sandwiches, six Snickers bars, a two liter of Pepsi, and a bunch of Asian food in my guest room. Let me know. I'll tell it next week on the pod. <laughs> ruining my, ruining a, a quilt my grandmother made. You let me know. We'll tell about it. Um, but anyways, it's an amazing connection that I have. And 
But as soon as people hear about it, immediately they went in on it. They're like, mm. oh, oh, can you, uh, can you put an order in for me? I'm like, oh, I'm no, 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 I can't. I'm sorry. And <laughs> you got to protect, you got to protect something. This is precious. Okay. I, I gave the man $10 last night and I walked away with 10 pounds of bacon. I've got to protect this with my life, okay? Yeah. I'm not just handing this in. People come to me at church and be like, oh, can you talk to so-and-so, see if he gets me some bacon? I was like, oh, I don't think he gets that. I don't think he can get it anymore. <laughs> and that might be you wrong. you got to get me a connection with a buddy of his there with all the bacon we go through. Dude, that'd be awesome. So that way no. it's like a secondary contact. Like maybe yeah. like Juan or Carlos or someone that's there that – I can just befriend and dude, I invite him over for bacon and cream cheese. We get the hookup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can get it for you, Jerry. I'll get it for you. I'll talk to him. Talk to the big fella. Talk see to what Foley we can do. And see. Yeah, but yeah, he's like, dude, sorry, they uh, they're supposed to give me twenty pounds. They only gave me ten, and I was like, dude, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. So I'm just like, <laughs> put my head down, get out of here. Is it it's like right. a late night? Like, where do you drive to get this? Is it like a late night pickup somewhere? Oh, I go to his house and then we'll just hang out. Okay. I'll hang out there, talk for a little bit and you know, just catch up for a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, so it's always after church on a Sunday night. So uh, church gets out around eight o'clock. And so I head over there and, you know, knock on the apartment door, go inside. Money changes hands, bacon changes hands, and I get out of there. So... It's it's uh, one of the few pleasures I have left in life. So um, my relationship with God, my children, and my bacon contact that gets it for me for a dollar a pound. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. Your BMI is 30. I know. Calm down. It's not the bacon's fault. It's the candy bars. So, yeah, that was my week, though. So I uh, saw the bacon hookup. Oh, one more thing. Let's talk about this real quick. And I don't know okay. if we'll actually get to any segments with the way things are going. Sweaty hands. Sweaty hands. I shook a guy's hands this shook a guy's hand this week. It was super sweaty. And it grossed me out. You ever shake someone's hand that has like yes. chronic sweaty hands? And yes. I'm sure it's like a medical condition and they can't help it. But man, it's just really unfortunate. I know. I know, no. man. I could you I, imagine being married to someone with sweaty hands oh, like that? Because no. I don't think you could hold hands with them. You could not hold hands. I would just be like, "Don't touch me." I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like or like wear gloves or something. You know, like I can't. We we can't. But I always think of there was one interaction I had back in my FedEx days and. You remember the uh, the good looking vice president we had there for a while? Oh yeah, Hollywood. Yeah. Jason was his name, but uh, he's probably a listener. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but anyways, um, he he was well, so I walked out of the bathroom. He's walking down the hall. Comes up to me, shakes my hands from Tennessee. You know, he's a southern boy. He's like, Justin, how you doing, man? Comes in for a handshake, nice, strong handshake. They they were out of paper towels in the bathroom. And so my hands were soaking wet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. And so he's, it's the vice president. He wants to shake my hand. And so I just go in for the handshake with a soaking wet hand. And he just, but he was such a nice guy, such a kind guy. That he just walked right on by. My hand was like I just got out of the bathtub wet. But he just keeps walking. He's like, good to see you, buddy. Shakes my hand. Doesn't like wipe his hand on his side. Just keeps rolling. And I'm like, that is a good guy right there. Like, man, was that's that a good guy. Was that the last time he shook your hand? No, no, no. That was okay. like before I became a supervisor and stuff. Like, yeah, it was. You were probably still working there at the time. Did you ever retell that story to him and be like, dude, no, I don't no, I never did. I never did. But 
Yeah, that's I don't know, funny. Dude, it was so. I always think about that when I think of sweaty hands because I'm like, either it's a sweaty hand or it was just an unfortunate. They're out of paper towel situation. It's like I have, I can show grace to people like that now because I've been through it. You know, you've been on the other. You've been on the giving side. Yes, <laughs> but most often I know it's just like a chronic sweaty hand deal so so okay you shook this guy's hand did did you do the same thing that uh this guy did to you and just you didn't wipe your hands off or did you clean your hands and your pants no i don't ever i'm not trying to embarrass him if it's someone that i know Mm -hmm. like i know a guy that that has it and i'll be like dude your hands always sweaty he's like i know man i just can't help it like it's i can't do anything about it and so yeah, if it's someone that I know really well, I'll say something. But like, I meet customers all the time, or you know, if I meet someone at church for the first time and I shake their hand, I'm gonna be like, "Oh man, sweaty hands over here." You see this guy? Gross. <laughs> so it does. It is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. So yeah, yeah, I'll never forget. You know, talking about weird interactions with people. There used to be a guy actually at FedEx too. You may or may not know him, but he had something. It's some sort of a chronic bad breath, hmm. but it was so bad. It smells like this guy was chewing on a corpse. And That's hard to believe. Oh, dude, it was so, so bad. You couldn't even get that close to him when you were talking with him. He was a close talker. So he naturally would be leaning in and, you know, wanting to whisper. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, dude, I can't breathe right now. But he couldn't do anything about it. And I felt bad. I'm like, he was married. And I thought, man, you, she took one for the team. You got to be chewing gum, though. Like, you got to recognize it, right? I, I mean, know. it it was bad, Justin. It was really bad. So I don't know if gum would have helped. Maybe. I have no it's idea. It's got to do something. You yeah. can't be chewing a couple pieces of mint gum and, like, not have any impact at all. There's got to be something you can do. I yeah, don't know. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's unfortunate, though. I mean, I'm not – I don't want the viewers to think, like, man, these guys are jerks. It's just – It's unfortunate yeah. things. It is. I mean, I had, I really had a funny is. thing happen that – my wife didn't tell me about for a little while, but if this was years ago when I would eat yogurt, if I would eat yogurt, you've heard of nasal drip before. It's some sort of like uh, your sinuses interacting with, you know, dairy or whatever like that. And it would give me bad breath as a result. And I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of it. Like I brush my teeth mm. a couple times a day and floss and all this stuff. And she's like, oh yeah, I just was like, you know, dealing with it. I'm like, just I say something. Bad. Yeah. Just say something. Yeah. What's the big deal? So I've I've been on that giving end of something wrong. And it's like, man, yeah, just tell me, like, hey, you gotta stop with the yogurt. So that was the yeah. end of them. Huh. That's weird. Yeah. So, anyways, so I'm sure we've got things too. So, viewers, leave a comment. What what's wrong with us? Leave a comment. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. We can't pay for it this week, but feel free. Tell Puff, me an issue that eyes. I have discolored neck i already know you know i've got diabetes and my bmi is 30 like other things what else do we got what else are we working with um okay so funny story from the pod from this past week so remember that um you know i was talking about my wife and technology and stuff like that sure she you know bless her heart she did not know what www stood for no way kid you not that's wild so we i i was thinking you know maybe that's part of our mission on this is just to educate the viewers that are unsure of of different things technology related apple pay www Mm. you know let them know that dial-up internet is still not a thing i mean we've got viewers of all ages and stages so that's true. We could be an educational, have maybe like educational segment. So that's surprising. She's not that much younger than I am, and so it's like, man, I she should she know. know so that. there's a term, computer term. I'm going to ask you if you know it, 
And it's the acronym G-U-I, or it's known as GUI. Do you know what that means? It's, it's technology. It's technology. Give me your best go around at it. In relation to what? Where would I see this? On a computer or on a phone? It's just like a computer term. Yeah, computer term. Garbage in, garbage out. No. G U I. I have no idea. So it's basically all the windows, buttons, and like toolbars and things like that that you would actually interact with is all that it is. Hmm. So just throwing out there for the viewers in case they're unaware of that. Yeah, I never knew that. So I just get on the World Wide Web. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> did you uh, did you have any interesting interactions this week? Yeah, I, I actually did have an interesting interaction this week, and it happened tonight when my wife went to the wings, took the kids out. Uh, the two oldest went with me because the youngest was sleeping, and they wanted to hang out with dad for a little bit before they went to bed, and the podcast started. And we're, we park, and I see this guy walking through the parking lot, and he sees us park, and he walks halfway between us and the door and just stands in the parking lot. Hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, this will be interesting. Of course, he's got like a backpack on, so I kind of know where this is going and stuff. So he asked me for money. Mm. And my son, who's very vocal about asking, you know, he'll see someone smoking a cigarette. Why are they smoking a cigarette? That's going to give him cancer. <laughs> <laughs> he's He's just like, Why'd that man ask you for money? And I was like, you know, we're walking inside. I'm <laughs> explaining to him. I'm like, and then we go back outside. He's still out there hanging out, just kind of doing his thing. And he wants money for drugs and stuff like that. And I was like, buddy, I don't know, but there's a good chance. I said, we'll always buy someone food. If someone needs food, we'll buy them some food. If they want water, we'll give them water. We will not give people money just to give them money because we don't know what that money's buying. So sure. Well, it was good life lessons, you know, but it's just so funny, like how he's, his thoughts come out full force, full volume, just yeah. uncensored. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. My daughter is still kind of in that, like she'll ask questions like that, you know, you know, and so it's, it's a gift and a curse. It is. It is. <laughs> Especially when they're like asking it in front of the person, you know, or like Ella will start laughing and then she'll like start quietly <laughs> saying like, why does that person look like that? And I'm like, we'll talk about it outside. We'll talk about it. We'll, let's get out of here. Let's get out of the store, you know? So or the, yeah, yeah, we've had those before, like those moments. We were looking for shoes one time at Walmart. They just needed some like summer shoes. And there's this girl some some lady she had her kid in the cart and she's bending over and you know her thongs riding up her back and <laughs> you know my kids are laughing and yeah. they're saying stuff and i'm like this is funny so yeah yeah i'm gonna laugh with you and then I'll, we'll talk about it later but <laughs> yeah in the moment yeah. you're like oh no my kids are oh, always no. doing that like i saw that guy's butt crack and i'm like come on <laughs> let's get out of here <laughs> Get the Cheetos and go. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I had an interesting interaction and I'm kind of torn on it. So I'll tell you about it. So okay. I was going to see my bacon contact and I said, hey, how much okay. you get? And he said, I got 10 pounds. So that means I need $10, right? Okay. I didn't have cash on me. So every Sunday afternoon on the way to take the kids back, we have another tradition. We stop by Dollar General and they can get any snack they want. Okay. So I'm in there, I'm buying the snacks, and I'm in there every single week. But I've never seen this guy, this cashier guy in there before. And so I'm like, you know, it's whatever, I don't care. So we're up at the register, it asks cash back, and I hit 20, which was like, it was like 20, 40, 60. And so I'm like, whatever, I just need 10 bucks, I'm gonna get 20. So the drawer opens, and I was like, hey, can I have uh, 10 and two fives? back. And he's like, no, I don't have enough. And 
I'm six foot two. Okay? I can see in the drawer. <laughs> There's a whole stack of five dollar bills. Sure, he had like two tens. Okay. There's a whole stack of five dollar bills. I was like, well, how about just all fives? And that's fine. And he's like, I don't have enough. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, you know. I said, how about ones? a ten? I said, how about a ten and five ones and a five? He's like, I'm sorry, I just I don't have enough change. And so he pulls out a twenty. And I was just like, <laughs> I said, I can see. I said, I can see in the drawer. There's a whole stack of five dollar bills. And he's like, no, there's not. He's, he said, no, there's not. <laughs> and he's like being dead serious. This guy's got like real long hair, you know, Dollar General t-shirt on. And, you know, I didn't have a chance to stop by one of the Enjoy Optical pop-up stations before going to the register. <laughs> but I was just like, but I can see, I said, I can see the whole stack there. And he's like, no, there's not. And I was like, I said, yes, there is. <laughs> and he's like, all I have is a $20 bill. Mm. And I was like, okay. Mm. I went like this. I said, okay, I'll take the $20 bill. And then Jonah's like, okay, go to the bathroom. I was like, Jonah, we're leaving. We got to get out of here. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is where I'm torn. This guy was ridiculous. I physically saw a stack of $5 bills. There's at least 10 of these $5 bills sitting there. I'm not an idiot. I'm six foot two. I can see directly into the register. Okay. And he looked me in the eye and said, no, there's not. And I'm like, yes, there is right there. Right. Like I am like, I'm not crazy. Maybe I am. Correct me if I am. But like, I understand how sometimes people can snap. Like in a situation like this, I'm just like, no, it's there. I see him right there. Nope. I'm like, what? I didn't say that, but, <laughs> but I what like, so, but what was weighing on me is I was like, I was rude to that guy. Like he was rude to me and like totally unreasonable, like lying straight to my face. But at the end of the day, it's not a big deal, right? Like it's not a big deal. And no. so, yeah. So I, you know, it is what it is. Right. Um, but I felt bad. I was driving back, and so I drive the kids and, and go to Columbus, and then I come back. And he – so I'm like, okay. Like, you know, Lord's dealing with my heart about it. And I was like, you know what? That was ridiculous. That guy was wrong. Obviously, he was wrong. Like, I saw the stack of fives. Like, you've got money to give me the change. What's the big deal? What are we doing this for? Like, who cares, yep. man? Yep. Other than you just want to have power over me, who cares? So I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to apologize to this guy. And I'm just, you know, I'm going to say, Hey, I just want to apologize. I was rude to you earlier. Like I'm going to find this guy. So I go hunting around. I get back in there. It's like five o'clock at this point. I'm walking up and down every aisle looking for this guy. He's not there. So if I see him this Sunday, I'm going to apologize to him. But, uh, I then took the 20 and I bought a drink to break it. That way I could get my 10 to get my bacon. But it was an interesting interaction. What What's your thoughts on that? Man, I'm torn. Because part of me would just reach in the register and grab out four fives. <laughs> it was absurd. Like, I saw the it's whole insane. stack. It's like, no, there's not. And I'm like, but I can see them. They're right there. No, they're not. And I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, all I got is this 20. And I was just like, all right, I'll, I'll take the 20. Okay. You should have taken the 20, wait till the drawer closes and be like, Go jump, act like you walk back in line and be like, hey, how's it going? Good, good. What can I do for you? Yeah, I got this 20. I'd like to break it. <laughs> or like buy a pack of gum right from him. <laughs> and I thought about it, but I was like, I'm like, and I'm not an angry person. Like this is like, I'm not, you know, you're like, maybe this guy's got like a hidden temper flies off the handle. No, that's not who I am. Like, I will just let things go. It's not a big deal. I will laugh about it. I'll joke about it. Like, I'm not an angry person. But this was like the angriest I was with someone else. Like, other than your kids. Like, you get angry with your kids when when they're like, you know, eating a freaking ice cream drumstick on the couch and just getting peanuts everywhere and ice cream's <laughs> melting on the sofa. And you're like, dude, what the heck are you doing? Right? Like, that's normal. You get upset about stuff. But like, 
with someone else. Like I never get in disagreements with people or like arguments with people in public. I'm always just like calm and collected, you know? And so, <laughs> yeah. This guy just, it, he so, knew how to push the buttons. Yeah. I was just like, Jonah, we got to go. We got to get out of here. And so we just left. And mm. I'm ashamed because I'm like, man, that was a bad testimony for people there. But I don't know. It was just, it was just so ridiculous. Yeah. It was just so ridiculous. So that's where so I'm so the, torn. The question that is coming to everyone's mind that's listening, because this segment is sponsored, is, is this going to be my experience at a pop-up location for Enjoy Optimal? No. No, no, no. See – no, that's that's not give gonna happen. give the people what they can expect. And maybe you can share about our sponsor. Sure. So we're <laughs> sponsored by Enjoy Optical in in Edmond, Oklahoma. So Enjoy Optical is a cure is a curated eyewear shop, and you're gonna go see our friend, and he is a doctor. So you're gonna go see him, <laughs> and he's gonna get you fixed up. But maybe you're sitting there and you're like Justin. I live in Northeast Ohio. How am I going to get to Edmond, Oklahoma? Well, besides the obvious ways of flying or driving, you could not go to Edmond, but instead go to one of the Dollar General pop-up locations nationwide. They're in every Dollar General store. When you're driving through the middle of the country and there's nothing else there, all of a sudden you're going to see a tan steel building with a big yellow sign. That's a Dollar General. You're going to go inside. There's going to be someone that may or may not have teeth, and they're going to assist you with your eyewear. So they're going to help you pick out a pair of frames. And so what you're looking for here is you're looking for fit, form, and function. So you want to make sure that it fits your face good. You know, if you've got a big face like me, so I got, I got a wide cranium, you need a special wide pair of glasses. Maybe you're elderly and you're going blind. You need some of those glasses that have sunglasses on the side of your glasses, okay? You know, whatever your eyewear need is, maybe you're just getting old and you got some floaters and you need something to help you read. You're going to go to the reading glasses section. You're going to find the ones that work right for you. So the staff there is going to be great. They're going to be fantastic. In the event, in the event you need to break a $20 bill, you're in the wrong place. Just give up. Just go home. It's not worth the trouble. There's no there's no five dollar bills in there. I know what you're thinking. I can see them. They're not really there. It's an illusion. Sure so. of your experience that if you were to have an experience such as you had, what yes. is our sponsor willing to do for our our listeners? Yeah, he's willing to refund. He's willing to refund your entire Dollar General purchase, <laughs> even if it wasn't eyewear related. So he's going to take care of you. So you're going to get online, www.worldwideweb.enjoyoptical.com, and you're going to fill out a complaint form there located at the bottom of the page. Just let them know what happened. Let them know what city your Dollar General is and the employee's name that you worked with. And he's going to, he's going to Venmo you. He's going to Venmo you the total. So you're going to need a picture of your receipt. So... Five yeah, butter that's what fingers. Gonna... Yeah. Case of fresca. A, a, a jar of queso and uh, <laughs> a toothbrush. A toothbrush and a pair of readers. And I had a bad experience. <laughs> and so we're going to refund the whole order. So enjoyoptical.com. <laughs> Hit them up. Hit them up. Oh, yeah. And that's why we. Pay him twenty five hundred dollars for each time we do an ad read. Yes, yes. So we own twenty five oh two for this episode. Um, isn't that just oh, so, a, such such a ridiculous interaction, though? Dude, that's that's an all time. That's one of my all time favorites. So it's like it, you could understand how I could be upset, right? Like, do you like give me honest feedback here? Yeah. So I feel like this guy's calling. And I'm not a coach, and neither are you. Our doctor friend is a coach. But I feel like just hearing this interaction that this guy needs to be – he's in the wrong field. I feel like he needs to be in another field um, outside of customer service inside of like a Dollar General. 
Like, what kind of field are we talking here? You know, I think like, he's one of these people chasing down bad debt. Yeah, I feel it just it just threw me off because I'm like, okay, so let's say there is only like two five dollar bills and a ten and five ones. Who cares? Who cares? You just go in the back and you say, Hey Marge, I got a twenty. Can you give me some fives and some ones for this? Like, does it really matter? <laughs> You know, like I remember working at McDonald's. If someone would have asked me that, I'd been like, yeah, sure. No problem. And then I would have just said to the manager, hey, I need more fives. Like, what's the big deal? I don't got them. And I'm sorry. I'm just selfish. I know that was selfish. I understand. And so that's why I went back. I wanted to apologize to him. And uh, so hopefully this Sunday he's there because I you don't I really you don't think that maybe he just quit. Was the store vacant? No, there was someone else in there. Okay. There was a guy and a lady in there. And I almost asked him, but I didn't want to, like, be a bother. So I was just like, oh, I'll just buy this and get out of here. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was totally absurd. But I should not. And I didn't lose my temper. I didn't, like, cuss, cuss the guy out. I was just like, no. Like, I see him. It's right, I, I, there, it's right there. There's a whole stack of fives. No, there's not. And so I should have just been like, oh, okay, you know, no problem. 20's fine. That's fine. You know, sometimes my eyes get crossed up a little bit. I got a lazy eye. Maybe I'm just yeah, I... a stack of 20s. <laughs> I got so a floater. I, but I should have just been like, nope, sorry. Okay, you know, sorry. And just not been like, fine. Okay, yep, that's fine. Give me the 20. Like, that was too much. I, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with the way that I acted. So I need to. Yeah. Definitely well, and it's a great life lesson too for your uh, your kids. You know, maybe next Sunday will be yeah. better because you'll be in there with them, and just they'll get to see dad. Yeah, I talked to them about it too, and Noah was like, Noah was like, I didn't think you were short with that guy or rude with him, and I was like, Well, I was like, I shouldn't have said what I said, and you know, I just want you guys to know that I'm sorry, and I'm gonna apologize to that guy, and so. Like I try to use things like that for a life lesson or like mm -hmm. like one time we were in the store and one of them knocked something off of the shelf and broke it. And so I took it up there and I paid for it. And the lady's like, oh, you don't have to pay for it. And I was like, no, I want to pay for it. And it was like a, as yeah, I forget even what it was, like some kind of Christmas decoration is like an Aldi or something, like something made of like clay or something, whatever, glass. <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, I want to pay for it. And I just told him like, look guys, the store paid for this and they were going to sell it and make money on it. So now they can't do that because we broke it. So we need to pay for this. Just like try to use real life things as life lessons. So I'm yeah. like, look guys, dad freaked out on that hippie in there telling him there was no $5 bills in the drawer. I need to say, I'm sorry to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really say it like that to them, but yeah, you know, so interesting well, interactions. There we go. Interesting. Um, I was thinking for our last segment, um, we could we could talk about our top five snack foods from the Husky years. But before sure. we talk about that, um, I know that our um, healthy chiropractor is sponsoring this segment. Do you want to give him a shout out? Yeah, so this segment's sponsored by Adjust Chiropractics. I know what you're thinking. Chiropractics are just witch doctors. They're tricking people. And I tend to agree with you. But if you're sitting there today and maybe your back is out of place or you're just feeling a little stiff, get on down to Adjust Chiropractics there in Canton. You're going to want to see Dr. Brian. There's a whole staff of people, so if he's not available, anyone will do. There's also a ex-Amish intern there that's got a strong <laughs> pair of hands. And so they'll get you set up over there. Adjust Chiropractic. Use the code WITCHCRAFT. You're going to get $10 off your first visit. So. Head on down there and tell them we sent you. Awesome. And that reminds me, too, I owe, um, I think I owe him the dryer lint. Correct? Yes, you said you were going to send it to the office down there. So I've got, I've actually been saving it up. I've got enough for probably a gallon zip Ziploc bag. And I was thinking about writing it to um, the Adjust Chiropractic staff. I don't want to leave anybody out. I want to make sure there's plenty there. That way when they get it, um, and I thought about maybe even sending it to you to deliver on the next, your next appointment. 
I'll, I'll take it. Because that's going to be good content. When you go and deliver it to the staff, maybe you could gather them all in and just say, hey, you know what? I got a special announcement. You know, Dr. B's the, you know, however you're going to present it. Special winner. No, they're special busy. Winner. They're at the front desk and stuff. They you got know. time. I don't think they're actually working. I think they just hang out. Really. That's the thing. You know, I'm like, man. Do you think it's a legit business or you think it's some sort of like a, like a, a scam? You think like they're laundering money around? I think they could be. Yeah. Like all those vitamins in the front room, <laughs> quote unquote. <laughs> What's really going on here? What in the world? You ever see all those supplements they got? Oh, like, yeah. They're yep. just peddling all kinds of stuff up in there. <laughs> Laundry mat in the back. Yeah, and there's kids running around on rollerblades and dogs running through. And I'm like, no, you're definitely, this some illegal is happening here, okay? No one's this happy, all right? I see, I'm into what you're, yeah, I'm smelling what you're smoking, literally and figuratively. Speaking of that, my goodness, dude, I went into someone's house. Maybe we'll put off the segment for next week, but. Okay. What? Yeah, you, so you went into someone's house? Something just. Oh, I have a Roomba. So I have a Roomba <laughs> vacuum and it gets stuck places and I don't know where it is. But then all of a sudden it'll just say like Roomba is stuck and requires your attention. And then I just heard it talking. So I think it's somewhere. I think it went into my boy's room. They left the door open of their room. And so it just goes in and like sucks up a dirty shirt or something. But <laughs> anyway, sorry. But dude, I went into someone's house and, you know, yeah, it smelled like marijuana to the max as a sales appointment. I was getting like a side high or something. I've never been high in my life. And I didn't feel, I really, you know, I didn't really feel loopy, but dude, I smelled like pot when I left there. And so I stopped at this truck stop and like opened the doors to the car because like I smelled like it. So then the inside of the car is smelling like it. So I had to get out and like air myself off. It was insane. I was just like, oh. what in the world? it's the middle of the day out here. What is going on? So I like purposely didn't go inside anywhere because I didn't want people to be like, oh, there's a pothead. What's this guy doing? You know, <laughs> I know it's legal viewers. I know some of you are smoking while listening, whatever, but it's just, dude, it was a lot. It was a lot. Oh, dude, our neighbors. Uh, yeah, in the back, they've been having pool parties and just the other day we were in the pool and, uh, my wife's like, can you smell that? And I can't smell super, super good, but she's got like a, the nose of a bloodhound right now. And sure enough, just got the pot just filtering over this way. It's a different time. Oh, yeah. So Is it legal I just in stayed Florida? out there as long as I could and I was just kind of like... I was just getting in my deep breathing. <laughs> I was just meditating out in the yard, <laughs> deep breaths. Oh my goodness. Dude, Honey, I'll be never... in a few minutes. I would do some grounding for about 20 minutes at the back end of the property. Yeah. Just out there like, what's your dad doing? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've never understood that sort of thing. And no. it's just, it's just never made sense. I've never smoked pot in my life. And, you know, I'm just like, why? Like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And I shared that quote with you. And so I'll just say it here. But um, how did it go? It was use your weekends to build the life you want, not to escape the life you have. So viewers, there's some wisdom to end the episode use your life or use your weekend to build the life you want, not to escape the life you have. So if you're out there trying to catch a side high at your neighbor's pool party, rethink what you're doing. You know, if you're going out to the club and you're getting drunk every weekend, why, what are you doing? So yeah, enjoy I like it. It's a very good quote to end on. Enjoy the wisdom. Yeah. You got anything exciting going on the rest of the week here? Uh, not that I'm aware of. We kind of just enjoy the week as it as it comes at us. We're gonna, yeah, probably just keep a, a normal week on the schedule as of right now. Yeah. How about for you? Yeah, next week is spring break for the kids, so um, oh, yeah, 
pumped about that. So I've got a few days. I've got like three days off work and we're going to get a cabin. Well, I reserved it. It's in uh, Berlin, like Amish country. It's got a hot tub and stuff. So me and the kids are going there and I know they're just going to be swimming around in this hot tub, hoping for decent weather. So as long as it's not raining, you can use a hot tub when it's kind of chilly. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But as long as it's not raining, that'll be good. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Dude, that's going to be so. a fun. That's going to be a fun week. Hmm. Yeah, it's my birthday on Monday. Yeah. This this coming Monday, so I'll be turning 34. So getting old, nice. man. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're ready to kick the bucket soon. Yeah, pretty Especially soon. Especially 30 I'll... BMI. 30 BMI struggling for breaths in between bites of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should make it this year. Like, it should be the goal for you to say, listen, if I'm 34, I want this BMI to be 34. <laughs> Every year I increase a point on my BMI <laughs> index. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dude, we that can follow the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so I have to, Justin, I have to your neck's not points. looking dark enough yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> More snacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to the bedtime snack routine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, what? it's possible. <laughs> We'll let me pray about it. Okay. Well, viewers, there you go. Episode ten in the books. We made it double digits, baby. Double digits, just like our BMIs. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> Love you guys. Peace. <laughs>